Hi everybody, I thought I'd just stick up a gratuitous cat video at the start here. Just uh, this is what my garden currently looks like. Very, very snowy here in Edinburgh. Um, don't know how, how the weather is uh, for you wherever you are, but uh, I hope it's pretty. And uh, I guess at least one advantage of being told to stay at home is uh, you don't need to worry about digging out your car and the stress of getting to work is perhaps uh, less of an issue. So welcome everybody and today our session today is a little bit of a unusual one compared to some previous ones in that I, I gave it a slightly cryptic title which I'll be honest was because I didn't have anything in the bag prepared but just really wanted to think well what would be an interesting way to start the year and my idea was really to try and tell you about some new things some new products um, and the products I've included in this session are definitely not all of the new products that I'm aware of, but just a little handful um, of products and focusing really on ones that I think will be of interest to you. And for the most part, actually, are things that you, you can get yourself without needing to actually speak to a vet. So they are not pharmaceutical preparations for the most part. And the first one that I, I wanted to talk about actually is an example of a pheromone product. Mm -hmm. And um, we're all quite familiar, I think, with pheromones in the world of cats in that uh, particularly one product, Feliway, has been used for many, many years. And probably all of you have had some experience of Feliway. Um, but I did think it might be a useful opportunity just to talk a little bit about pheromone therapy, uh, which is a slightly made up word to really explain um, how we might use these pheromone preparations in, in our cats and in our households. And pheromones are chemicals which communicate messages um, between cats. They are species specific, so they are um, messages that we are not able to pick up ourselves. These chemicals um, are only detectable by cats and they detect them actually through an organ at the roof of their mouth which is called the vomeronasal organ. I've written that on this slide here. So the vomeronasal organ is a very specialised organ on the roof of the mouth and when you see your cat pull this sort of strange expression which is not actually what's shown in the photo, this was the closest one I had though, where they're slightly mouth open, they're breathing in and they often have a sort of slightly uh, abstract expression on their face, then that typically is when they are inhaling um, these pheromones and that are interacting with this organ on the roof of the mouth and telling them something about their environment. And the something that might be communicated might be a happy message, uh, a sort of um, reassuring message about their environment. Um, it may be what we call a harmony message or an appeasing message. And I'll talk more about what that means uh, a little bit later as well. Or it may be a territory message. It may be that this is Blackie's territory or this is my territory um, that is being communicated. And I mentioned Feliway already, but Feliway is um, the original Feliway, which is now called Feliway Classic because there have been subsequent Feliways. But the original Feliway, uh, which you're probably most familiar with, um, is um, a synthetic preparation of the facial pheromone F3 complex. And you will all know this behavior where your cats are rubbing themselves, their cheeks, on your legs or on the wall or perhaps nudging each other and these cheek glands produce these pheromones. Um, the familiarization pheromone is another term that's often used and that's just communicating to the cat this is a safe environment where I feel reassured this is you know a home or an environment where I, I feel I feel okay. And so um, Siva is the company, Siva Animal Health actually developed uh, this synthetic product, uh, working very closely with a French scientist, Professor uh, Paget, who's extremely famous in this field, lots and lots of publications. And uh, Feliway Classic comes in two forms. It comes as a, a spray, which uh, you 
probably are less familiar with, I would guess, um, and a diffuser, which is this plug-in uh, that you can see on the left-hand side that looks a bit like a, a, an air freshener that you would have in your home, but when you plug it into your home, you can't smell anything. And that is probably the one that you're most familiar with, and huge numbers of these are sold every year. And it has the, the effect, this diffuser, of um, sending out these sort of happy messages into your home, or if you use it in your vet clinic or your cattery, again, sending out those sort of reassuring messages. The spray is not uh, designed to be used on the cat, very importantly. The spray is designed to be used on the environment, but can be used in a very targeted way. And so a common recommendation would include spraying uh, the cat's carrier before they come uh, on a journey either to the vet clinic or to a boarding cattery for example and so the spray is actually a really useful thing to have in your household for those times of, of short-term stress where you want to just make sure that the environment is as reassuring as possible so that would be spraying within the carrier spraying the bedding that's in the carrier perhaps even spraying in your car as well and then after about 20 or 30 minutes um, it's then suitable for introducing your cat and the reason that you should wait 20 or 30 minutes is just because the the pheromone preparation comes in this uh, I think it's an alcohol containing spray which is designed to help dissipate it in that environment but from a cat's perspective that carrier is not very pleasant to them um, so you would uh, therefore spray it as I say 20 or 30 minutes before the cat comes into contact with it. And just for a little bit of, of info on this as well, there, there are definitely quite a few publications where Feliway has been used um, and it really is scientifically proven. So it's it sounds pheromones probably sound like quite a vague, slightly um, intangible thing to really put a lot of uh, evidence base on. But actually, there are a number of studies that have been published in very high quality veterinary journals, such as the Journal of Feline Medicine and Surgery, which is uh, the publication highlighted here. And this is a paper, a uh, fairly recent paper, which uh, reported that using Feliway spray at the vet clinic on the consulting room table reduced the stress score of the cats coming into the room afterwards. Uh, so a real life example of how we can reduce the stress associated with a vet visit. And similarly, for some medical conditions like idiopathic cystitis, uh, which is often um, exacerbated by stress within the household, there is some data to support the use of Feliway in the home um, as a way of uh, reducing that cat's stress levels and, and helping them to feel uh, more calm and more reassured in their home environment. Um, and whilst in this study, actually, it didn't reach significant levels in that they weren't able to say that all the cats that had fell away did significantly better than the ones that didn't get it. Um, certainly, there was a very strong trend in that direction. So it is something that I would often recommend for those situations where uh, we either know or suspect stress could be having an impact on, on our patients at home. So when do we use Feliway Classic? Um, well, the spray, as I say, the main use is really for those stressful situations like travel uh, or going to a boarding cattery would be another example. Um, or if you're working in a rescue shelter before admitting your new cats into the shelter, you can spray the Feliway spray onto all the bedding, um, cardboard boxes or other hidey boxes that you put into the kennels, as well as using a Feliway diffuser in the general environment to help the cats feel more relaxed. Um, the Feliway diffuser meanwhile at home is very helpful if you're getting a new cat into your household um, or if there is other stressful things going on for example you perhaps are having some building work in your house uh, or you know your cat has got an illness which is exacerbated by stress or you suspect stress to be a feature. So lots of situations where Feliway can be helpful and indeed the Feliway website which is just feliway.com has got lots and lots of articles on there as well and lots of resources you might find useful. 
but I did think it also might be helpful to just take a little detour into feline stress very briefly really just to talk about this because it is more and more something that we're aware of. Um, cats um, don't always make their stress very apparent to us so they don't always give us the sort of grumpy face on the left of the slide that we have here the anxious cat it, it, within a veterinary clinic. Um, sometimes the signs of stress can be much more subtle and one of the subtle ways in a vet clinic actually that we might see a cat to be stressed is the cat pretending to be asleep and you can see this cat in the photo on the right hand side looks like it is asleep on a chair this happened to be my consulting room chair uh, in the in the clinic and this cat uh, has curled up on the chair and appears to have gone to sleep but if you look very closely at the cat you can see it's not looking very relaxed. It looks extremely tense. Um, the whiskers, the ear position, the eyes are sort of clenched shut. It all is looking very tense. And this is an example of a cat that is trying to hide. Um, and it's decided and realized there's nowhere actually real that it can hide at the vet clinic because vet clinics are very sterile. They don't have hidey holes because we don't want to have our patients uh, uh, hiding under a cupboard and for us not able to get them out. Therefore, it's this cat's trying to hide in plain sight. And it's a clue that this cat sadly is, is feeling quite stressed uh, by the visit uh, to the vet. In the home environment, recognition of stress also is not always easy. So there are some things that uh, we can look out for. Some of these, of course, can be seen with other problems, with illnesses. Uh, for example, the ones on the right um, being less active and not eating. Well, that, that often is seen with any illness that we might see in our cats, but certainly can be a feature of stress for some cats as well. Scratching in the home, increased scratching, inappropriate scratching in the home uh, can certainly be uh, a feature with stress. Hiding often as well if the cats do have opportunity to hide and, and we should offer them places that they can hide in the home so that they can escape from whatever potential stressor um, that, uh, that they detect. Spraying of urine, um, something that's quite difficult for us to live with, definitely can be a manifestation of stress. And of course, if we see visible conflict with other cats, actually fighting with other cats or hissing or growling at other cats, um, then that uh, we know is, is uh, likely to be stressful for the cat. And there are lots of things that do stress cats out uh, and again you will know many of these um, but this is just a, a list of co common examples common causes of stress in cats and generally it's things that uh, unsettle the routine cats like a routine um, and they like to know where they are they like to feel in control of their environment so anything that really upsets that routine or that sense of control for example a, a new baby or a new pet or a builder um, all these sorts of things can can be extremely stressful for the, the cats to cope with. So moving on um, from um, that uh, as a concept in the Feliway Classic, we have some more Feli ways. In recent years, uh, SIVA have developed different products. Um, and one of the newer products that you may have some experience of is Feli way Friends. And this is a synthetic preparation of a different pheromone, uh, what's called the appeasement pheromone, that is normally produced in the mammary area of mummy cats when they're feeding their kittens um, to reduce any signs of conflict or tension between those kittens that obviously have to be quite close together when they're nursing from, from their mum. <clears throat> and it's uh, often called a harmony marker. And uh, Feliway Friends, quite an exciting product when it came on the market. And again, there are some papers um, where people have studied more critically um, the impact of this product on households and its ability to reduce stress and conflict. Um, and so it, it is, yeah, again, a scientifically tested and proven product that can be really helpful. Um, and situations when it might be helpful to use would, of course, be those situations where you know there is conflict within the household where there is obvious signs of, of tension between cats. 
But unfortunately, again, cats, they often play their cards close to their chest. They don't always make it easy for us to, to read their behavior. And signs of tension, signs of conflict are not always very obvious. And I really like this photo on the right hand side of the slide, which um, shows two, two of my former cats now. Sadly, both these cats uh, are no longer alive. Um, but Hobie, the tabby cat on the left of the picture, you can see is uh, within the same frame of the photo as Sooty, the black and white cat in uh, the background. And uh, these cats, uh, it's fair to say, they, they definitely weren't friends, um, but there was never any obvious signs of conflict between them. There never any fights, I don't think even a growl or a hiss, um, but they very definitely weren't friends. And the reason I can tell you that is because um, I, interested uh, very much in cat behavior. I looked very closely at the way these two behaved and it was extremely rare to actually be able to take a photo with them both in that same frame, which is partly why I love this photo. They're both in it, but they're particularly Hobie's probably uh, unaware that Sooty's, Sooty's behind him and perhaps Sooty is in denial that Hobie's there. They're looking in slightly different directions. So what can we do if we aren't sure whether our cats do get on with each other? Um, perhaps there's no obvious signs of conflict, but you know we're trying to work out how close friends or otherwise our two cats are. Well, a useful exercise can be to write down the names of your cats on a piece of paper and then to look at their behavior, look for clues of, of what we would call positive or affiliative behavior, the sort of friendly behavior. And if you see that, then draw a green arrow or arrow of your choice uh, between the, the two cats, the one showing the positive behavior and then going to the cat uh, uh, for which the positive behavior is is shown. So if, if uh, I'll give you some more examples in a moment, but uh, if Sooty nuzzles Twizzle or does a, a little sort of uh, head rub with Twizzle, then the arrow goes from Sooty to Twizzle. And uh, then on the other hand, if we see any signs of conflict at all, um, such as hissing, growling, um, blocking behavior, again, I'll give you some more examples uh, in a moment, then we can do a red arrow uh, between those cats. And uh, at the time that I did this study, you can see there's a third cat in the picture. This is Twizzle. Um, Twizzle is completely feral cat, so uh, very few photos of Twizzle, but uh, hiding under the top of a cat carrier in this picture. And Sooty and Twizzle actually got on fine, um, but Hobie, as you can see, didn't uh, give or receive any positive behavior. He was he was all on his own. So we have two social groups in the household, Sooty and Twizzle that are quite happy together, Hobie that's okay in his own space but definitely not a friend of Sooty and Twizzle and we need to make sure that our home accommodates these uh, two social groups and that we have enough resources, food, water, litter tray, sleeping areas etc etc to mean that we don't have any um, uh, pinch points where the cats may be in conflict with each other to access these resources. So when looking at the uh, positive sorts of behaviours we might want to look at, this is a, a fairly comprehensive list of what we might look out for. So sharing a food bowl, um, sleeping, touching each other, grooming each other, rubbing each other, nose to nose greetings, playing together, uh, chirruping, these little sort of noises that cats make to greet each other. These are all positive things. We do need to be a little bit careful about some of these though. Um, and uh, I put in this photo of a huge number of cats eating simultaneously as an example of where sharing the same food bowl, uh, we do need to understand how food is being offered in the household. And in this household with a lot of cats, as you can see, um, they were fed um, at certain meal times on mass in the way that's shown in the photo. Therefore, if the cat wanted to eat food, it, it had no choice but to eat at that time. And therefore it's a little bit harder to say that these cats are eating alongside each other because they like each other. Really, that's the only, only way they're going to get any food. Um, but other measures of affiliative behavior are a lot easier. And this lovely photo at the bottom of the two cats snuggling, cuddling um, each other, you know these cats absolutely adore each other. They are definitely in the same uh, social group. Aggressive behavior or signs of conflict 
often are very subtle because cats are very sensible creatures. They're not going to get themselves into a fight where they may be injured. That's a last resort uh, for them. So we rarely see actually overt signs of, of aggression in the household. It has to be, you know, things have to be pretty bad for that to happen. Um, but we often will see more subtle signs of conflict where cats may be um, uh, rather than um, cuddling up against each other, they may um, be avoiding each each other they may even when they're in a quite crowded house such as the one shown here which is the same household that had all the cats eating together they may try and look in different directions to almost uh, narrow their field of view of uh, I can just see one cat if I look in that way so I'm I'm in a two cat household there aren't really 20 cats around me for example but you can see these cats are not really sort of relaxing in terms of their body language in each other's company they are um, just trying to find a little space where where they can um, have uh, some space to themselves hissing growling are much less frequently seen sometimes we see cats blocking uh, access to resources which again is why we need to make sure we have plenty of resources and free um, access and exit points so that no one cat can stop another cat or cats from uh, accessing the litter box for example or accessing the cat flap um, and there's a, a lovely video which I won't play in full, um, but you can uh, access this if you search for um, Are Your Cats Friends or Foes on YouTube. It's a cat protection video from a few years ago. And it's really lovely because it just goes through some of the tips to look out for. Um, as I've mentioned, you know, your cats that uh, uh, are friends often will groom each other. The foes might, in this instance, timeshare resources. So one cat gets uh, perhaps the downstairs of the house, the other tends to focus on the upstairs, or they one is, is outside in the mornings and inside in the afternoons as a way of minimizing conflict. They just work out something that, that works for them. And as long as we can make sure there are enough resources in the home, um, then we can minimize conflict between cats, even if they're not really best friends it's just all about uh, respecting their different needs and giving them as much space and different facilities as we possibly can so I'll let you uh, potentially look up that video yourselves at another time and move on to another pheromone preparation, which is called Felis Scratch. Um, this is a preparation which I think actually is no longer available, um, but um, this uh, the, the message being signaled by the Felis Scratch was the interdigital uh, between the toes pheromone, which is a territory marking pheromone. So when your cat's scratching, they are leaving these traces of this pheromone on the surface they scratch um, and uh, Siva came up with a synthetic product uh, that um, mimics this pheromone which encourages the cats to scratch on surfaces that you want them to scratch on so um, you get to, within this pack a, a number of sachets of this synthetic pheromone preparation which you can then put on your scratching surface. Um, the cat in this photo had been uh, enjoying removing the wallpaper um, in his owner's home and uh, that was what instigated discussions with me. Uh, the felly scratch on the on the scratching post was extremely successful in transferring that scratching behaviour to a, um, a preferred substrate from our perspective because it is important that cats can scratch. It's a normal behaviour even though they, they will do more of it potentially if they're stressed but we also want it to be on a surface that suits us rather than our furnishings. So this is uh, a less successful video example. I put some fellow scratch on the post. Yep, interesting to smell, but not actually going to scratch that today. Um, but actually, uh, this is one of my kittens again, and they, they are um, using scratching posts and not furniture. So they seem quite happy. And that brings me on to the final bit of the pheromone discussion today, which is Feliway Optimum. So this is the new thing to mention. So Feliway Optimum is a new Feliway. You may have seen some marketing to do with it if you are in the, the Feliway uh, social media groups or, or following these sorts of things online. Um, and at the moment, there's not a lot uh, published that I can refer you to uh, in the public domain yet. I'm sure that will follow. Um, but Professor Paget, this uh, really inspiring 
inspiring pheromone scientist in France, um, has studied the, the feline pheromone receptors and um, they have developed this new pheromone complex, which is, um, in their opinion and from the trials they've done so far, superior to fellow classic and fellow friends and, and therefore uh, is something that uh, we should view as the, the ideal, perhaps the gold standard uh, pheromone preparation to use which is not to say that fellow classic and fellow friends don't have a role to play but this perhaps is the the uh, the bells and whistles preferred option uh, for using us and indeed if you have a cat that perhaps is still seeming a little stressed in spite of fellow use and you've been using the fellow classic um, then you may wish to try the fellow fellow optimum and I, I don't believe from what i've seen that it is uh, significantly different in terms of cost it may be a little bit more expensive but it's not uh, 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 I don't think there's going to be any sort of cost barrier in terms of its uh, widespread adoption. And so many vet clinics also are now starting to use Feliway Optimum in their waiting rooms, their consulting rooms, their cat wards for the cats as well. So uh, Feliway has dominated a lot of this presentation um, and I, I hope that's been of interest to you because it is an important topic, stress is an important topic, but also these pheromones are quite exciting uh, products I think to have available to us. But I had a few other products that I just wanted to mention more briefly in the, the next uh, probably 10 minutes. Um, the first one is actually a food um, and uh, it's quite an exciting food in that it's actually not really aimed at the cats, it's it's aimed at the owners, which is makes it, I think, quite a unique food. Um, and this is a, a food I've and I just spotted a typo. It should say Purina, not Purine at the top there. Purina, um, Live Clear or Live Clear. I think it's Live Clear, but uh, again, I, I'm not absolutely certain. And this is a food that's been designed for um, people who have an allergy to cats. And lots of people who love cats actually do have an allergy to cats, uh, which can be very frustrating for them. Um, and the um, allergy that, that people develop to cats is typically to um, a protein called FEL-D1 which is produced in the salivary glands and some other glands within the body. Um, but its production in the salivary glands means that when the cat grooms, uh, this protein is transferred onto their coat and onto the dander and the dust within the coat. It's a very small protein, so it's often uh, spreads very easily within the atmosphere around the home and other environments. And if you have an allergy to cats, when you come into contact with that protein, it will trigger that allergic response, which might be that your eyes and your nose stream, um, that you, you have some uh, worsening of your breathing, for example, all these sorts of symptoms of uh, cat allergy. And Purina have, again, very scientifically developed this diet and it contains um, an egg yolk immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulins are antibodies and that uh, egg yolk immunoglobulin actually binds to the FEL-D1 protein and effectively neutralizes it. So it, it really reduces the burden of this allergen in the environment. And for many people with allergies, um, it can take them below the the allergy threshold below the, the level at which they they start to suffer from their cat allergy um, I think as Purina would say it's not 100% perfect it's not 100% guaranteed um, but it certainly is scientifically developed and tested um, and anecdotally I can tell you from some colleagues of mine who uh, have cat allergies or whose partners and or husbands have uh, cat allergies that they found it very helpful um, and uh, so that is the main indication for its use and there are different life stages of this diet available and uh, indeed actually it's a food that we're, we're using in my home because my husband's asthmatic and whilst he doesn't know if cat allergy is is a component of his asthma uh, we thought this was something worth trying out um, and it certainly seems uh, as per many diets that are available to us extremely palatable and popular and uh, cats are doing well on it but the main indication really is for people who have uh, an allergy to cats to use it. 
The other product that I wanted to mention that, that uh, is um, uh, also a nutritional supplement uh, or is a nutritional uh, product rather is uh, another product actually that made by Purina. Again, I must have must have an autocorrect on that's uh, changed Purina to Purina. I apologize for that typo there. Um, but this is a product called HydraCare, which also very recently launched. Um, uh, I think probably became available in the UK December, January. So it's, it is pretty new. And this is um, a supplement. So it's something you feed alongside or you offer alongside your cat's food and water. And it's a sort of gravy, although the, the sort of posh terminology is that it's a nutrient enriched water. And again, this is something that is really very scientifically developed, um, but it is um, the intention of it is to support hydration um, and to increase water intake in those situations where we want to in uh, increase water in can't speak sorry in those situations where we want to increase water intake and I'll talk about what those situations are briefly in just a moment. But it's more clever than just water because it contains these substances called osmolites, which are somehow able to uh, improve absorption of water at a cellular level. It's much more efficient than just adding, uh, you know, a tablespoon of water to your cat's food, for example. And also importantly, it does seem to be quite palatable in that the field studies that have been reported with this uh, product, the cats have uh, perhaps taken a few days to get used to the product, but then preferred it over water. So they have preferentially been consuming this product and it has been successful in increasing their water intake. So the, the average is that they consume 28% more water than they would have done otherwise. And it comes in a pouch format um, and uh, the advice is uh, for those cats where it is indicated one or two pouches a day in a separate bowl to their food and their water so offered alongside um, and the sort of situations where it might be helpful would include um, definitely those cats that, that are vulnerable to dehydration so for example cats with chronic kidney disease or other illnesses that increase their their water requirements um, um, this could be a, a way of uh, supporting hydration effectively and perhaps uh, more effective than offering water fountains, trying to uh, make flavoured waters for cats, which are all the sorts of tactics that uh, we have done in the past and certainly nothing wrong with those tactics. But if you look at publications, certainly um, things like water fountains, that really isn't good data to suggest that they actually always make a difference. Perhaps for some cats they do help to encourage thirst and drinking but in many cats it, they don't actually have much of an impact whereas the hydrocare does seem to have much more of an impact. In cats with lower urinary tract disease, often we want them to drink more because if they've uh, had problems with uh, urinary stones, we want them to produce dilute urine that uh, doesn't predispose them to future stones uh, development. Um, but also in cats with idiopathic cystitis that's often associated with stress, um, it has been shown that increasing water intake can be um, helpful in terms of those cats reducing recurrence of clinical signs. So we often focus on that a lot and this is a I think a useful tactic for us to consider. Many older cats uh, suffer from constipation which possibly is because they are running a bit dry, slightly dehydrated or on that borderline and again these cats may benefit from some hydration support with, with something like the HydraCare. Um, but also in the short term perhaps cats that have you know had a bout of diarrhea, particularly again those older more fragile cats, it might help them to, to boost them back to, to where they were to have some uh, extra hydration support. So this is definitely a quite an interesting product. Um, I have got a box to try, but I'm not actually, um, I haven't actually tried it out yet. Um, but if anyone has used this or in, indeed other products that I've mentioned, it'd be lovely to hear your feedback and comment comments in the discussion as well. And then the last product product that I put in here is actually a drug, so it is a medicine, but I do think it is quite an exciting one to mention, uh, hence including it in this cat cafe. Uh, and this is a product called Miritaz. 
and Miritaz um, it contains a, a medicine called metazapine and metazapine is an anti-sickness and an appetite stimulating medication and indeed for quite a few years now we have used metazapine quite a lot to support cats with poor appetite. Um, chronic kidney disease cats would be very uh, frequently um, patients that I would use metazapine in in the past but there's not been a vet licensed form of this medication. Um, we have had access to human medications which we cut up into tiny tiny pieces um, but more recently some of the vet uh, compounding uh, companies and uh, specials labs produce cat sized tablets which is great Eight. But Miritaz is the first veterinary approved formulation of that medicine. And also very excitingly, it's the first transdermal medication uh, which has been approved in the UK for cats. And transdermal medications are ones that we apply to the skin and they're absorbed through the skin. So there are obviously lots of creams that exist for, for use in cats, but these are what we would call topical products because they're designed to just work on the skin. A transdermal product is one which is absorbed through the skin and into the bloodstream. And Miritaz is the first transdermal that's been approved for use in cats uh, in the UK, Europe and North America, I believe. And uh, it's um, quite an easy dose frequency as well. It's once a day or once every other day, depending on the cat and its uh, clinical situation. For cats with kidney disease, we typically say every 48 hours. And uh, I've not included any screenshots of the scientific studies that have been done, but it has been well studied again. Some really good data that's come out showing that it is uh, typically very safe, well tolerated and also very effective. But it is unusual and exciting because it is this transdermal formulation and the place, the skin area that we usually use for transdermal preparations is the inner surface of the pinna, which is the ear flap. So um, this is a, an area of skin, um, which uh, let's just get my cursor to work, which uh, is naturally very um, bare in terms of hair, but also is, appears to be from studies quite good at absorbing medications. Um, so this is the area that's typically used. Um, and indeed, um, this uh, black and white picture below on the slide is just a leaflet from the mirror task showing how to measure out the appropriate amount of that product uh, onto the cat. Um, if you are applying it it with the finger um, then you, really important for you to wear gloves or what's called a finger cot which is just like a, a little condom for one finger because of course if it's a transdermal medication it's designed to pass through the skin and if you apply it to your own skin it will pass through your skin and potentially cause um, effects in you which you might not want. So these are, um, uh, I think, very innovative products and it's very exciting to have a transdermal medication which is uh, veterinary authorised, which is licensed for use in cats. Uh, you may have uh, some experience of transdermal methimazole for hypothyroid cats. This is still not a veterinary approved treatment, although it is something that, that uh, we do use from time to time. The great advantage of Miritaz is that it is actually veterinary approved, which I think is uh, very exciting. So situations where using Miritaz would potentially be really helpful are both short and long term situations where appetite support would be helpful. Um, and so, as I've already mentioned, a common indication would be cats with chronic kidney disease that often do have poor appetite, often do have nausea as well. Metazapine can be extremely effective and you can use it safely for for years. So it can be an extremely effective um, product to use. But there are many cats that have a short term loss of appetite for all sorts of reasons. And whilst we're treating whatever that cause of the poor appetite is, or indeed whilst we're investigating what might be causing the poor appetite, it's going to be really helpful to have Miritaz available. Also, it does mean that if the cat doesn't like having a pill and it's on lots of pills for other things, this is a product which in its transdermal form uh, minimizes the number of tablets that the cat has to receive. So I think it's quite a, a cat friendly, uh, you know, a kinder treatment uh, to give. And so uh, therefore good for that situation as well. 
So that really concludes all I was going to say in terms of the, the snapshot of, of products that have emerged. Um, as usual, just a pointer to the website where there are lots of resources, um, previous discussions from uh, previous cat cafe, cat cafe sessions that we've had, um, relevant documents like the free download on encouraging fluid intake in cats. That doesn't include reference to HydraCare, this new product I've mentioned. We'll obviously have to update that, but has lots of other tactics in it, which you might find helpful. And I will look forward to now opening up discussion, hearing some comments from you, and also uh, let you know that next time I'm going to focus on medication tips and tricks for cats. Um, because I thought having spent time putting this one together, and particularly with the Miritas coming out, it's a good opportunity to look at uh, what are the, the easiest ways to administer medications to a cat, um, what sort of discussions are helpful to uh, have with your vets, should you have difficulties um, how can I guide you how can I support you so that will be my plan uh, for next time session and now I'm going to uh, look in the chat box and see if there's some questions um, but also feel free to either type any or unmute yourself I'll just have a little look thank you